Welcome to Sorted Food. Our normals have been learning, battling and bickering for years now. No, Jamie! Why have you Just turned that on? I haven't. You've turned mine on to six! And quite rightly, you've pointed out where on earth are they on the scale of normal to chef. So this year, we've come up with the ultimate test to find out once and for all. We've come up with a load of challenges to test them on three core attributes that we believe make a top chef. That's technique, creativity, and organization. Under each attribute, there's a whole bunch of skill badges, and the boys will have to compete to win them. We love a competition, so we'll tally them up as we go, and at the end, one of our normals will be crowned the ultimate chef skills champion. Buckle up, everyone. I don't imagine it'll be a smooth ride. So, boys, the second episode of our Ultimate Chef Skills Challenge is centred around creativity. As a chef, we want you to be in tune with both the ingredients and your imagination, and together they should come up with some excellent results. We've got three badges up for grabs today. You can each win one, two, three, or none, if you're really rubbish. Bring on the badges. Okie dokie, challenge number one is plating skills. What we've done is prepared a whole bunch of ingredients for you. You are at the pass of a busy kitchen and we have hungry diners waiting. So we're gonna give you three minutes oh. to plate up one portion of food. That must include duck, potato, yep. beetroot and sauce. All the other garnishes and extras, up to you. Use as you please. Diners are waiting, your time starts now. Okay, well, first things first, I know exactly what I'm gonna have to do with the duck, because that's gonna have to be sliced. All about confidence. That is a beautiful quenelle straight away. It looks, oh no, oh no! I'm dripping, I'm dripping, right, come on. Some red beetroot-like um, mix with some shiso leaves. Yep, this is what chefs do. They do something like that. They our duck down. You've had a minute. All right, I'm just going to cut the duck. Just cut the duck, Mike. Wow, three minutes isn't long. It's probably quite generous in an actual restaurant, but obviously in an actual restaurant, you'd know what's in front of you. So there's a bit of guesswork and working out as you go here. Oh, that might be beetroot as well. No. Oh, that's a jus. OK, some sort of gravy things going on here. You've had half your time. Oh, no. Onions on top of our potato. A little bit of crunch in there as well. Let's just start trying to build some height. I'm going to pop on a parsnip. Put my duck like that. And carrots. Because carrots. Are yes, great. food has got to look good, but it's also got to get out to the diners before it gets cold. A couple of these things, which I assume are, I should check. Roasted parsnips, cool. A bit more spinach. You've got all four elements on there. 50 seconds remaining. Happy? Yes. With time to spare. Okay, okay. Oh, no, Plato, 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 Plato. Five, four, three, two, one. Service, please. You may leave the kitchen. <sighs> oh, that's annoying. Jay, reveal your efforts to the boys. I can't wait for this. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, mate. Oh, yeah. What is that? That is amazing. I don't know what that is. Importantly, you put all four necessary components on the plate. What we liked was the way the duck was sliced, nice and even. It kind of arcs round, matching the plate. You haven't overfilled quite a large plate. It's kind of centred and the sauce has been scattered. You've added a pickle element to balance it out through the acidity and you've got crunch. Good effort. Barry, you're up. Oh, <laughs> it's quite smeary, isn't it? A good choice of plate with a wide rim. We quite like that. We like the fact that you're dressing half the plate and leaving plenty of space. Probably the strongest choice of cutting duck. Not only does it look good like that, but also it holds its heat better than slicing individually. You started with the crispy elements and you put them on the bottom and then covered them with stuff. 
And we were a little bit confused by taking something as beautiful as a potato fondant and slicing it in half, opening it up. A few smears, but otherwise, very artistic. Can you imagine if you and I get a badge for creativity around plating food and Barry doesn't? Jay, we both know that I don't do badges. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, Mike. Rotate, it's your turn. Ooh, nice. I think you put stuff on the plate that you'd want to eat. And what you did was a good amount of sauce on the base. We like the fact that, again, the duck has been carved. The components, you've got some fresh greenery, you have got the components you need, plus some texture. Two fondants, like that, maybe a little odd. Hey, you get good value for money at my <laughs> restaurant, Evers. <laughs> but pretty wholesome. Mike, Jamie, you tasted as you went along. You knew what you were plating. Barry was a bit more guesswork. That said, some of you plated things you didn't know what you were plating, having tasted them. <laughs> <laughs> We've discussed with the food team. And the only one we would send out into the restaurant is Jamie's. Which I honestly never thought I would say. <laughs> You don't have to give out badges. If no one here deserves one, it's fine. Just don't give them out at all. Don't give it out because you have to. Ebers, the knife and fork excites me. Uh, the pen and paper, less so. What's next? Challenge number two is the menu writing skill. A chef has an arsenal of tools available to them to create menus and words are one of those. So imagine yourself in a restaurant. We want you to eat the plate of food you've just prepared and then play the role of head waiter and describe to diners exactly what a dish is. On the menu it's simple enough, but this is the expanded description. We want key flavours, general feel of the dish and emotive language that makes me want to order it. We're going to give you 10 minutes to tuck in, but then we want you to pitch your plate to our diners at home. And your time starts now. Is it rainbow carrots? What are they called? They're not called rainbow carrots, rainbow carrots. What is in that sauce? It's delicious. I can't tell if I'm tasting the hand sanitizer on my hand. That's a problem. We did give you cutlery. Oh, what's your brown smudge? Of the earth, that one. Best than saying mushroom, because it might not be mushroom. Had a quarter of your time. Oh, wait, is that on the top? This is very different to any challenge we've ever done on Sorted, but I think we all fall into the trap of using the same descriptors time and time again. Umami, flavour. What is flavour? Oh, that's a great word. Oh, wow, it's delicious. It's almost seaweedy. Of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know for sure that that's got fennel. Um, it's cooked pink which people will care about if they're in a restaurant. Last 60 seconds, how are you feeling? Obviously, this is the first Not time- time to talk. Ah, oh, what's the word, what's the word? Umami. Five, four, three, two, one. You may now leave the kitchen. Leave the paper. No swatting up. I'm guessing you've just drawn a picture, have you? Oh, just <laughs> describe the picture. So I'm interested in the duck dish. Could you tell me a bit more about it? I'm so glad you asked. It's a moist and succulent roasted duck breast, flavoured with fennel and aniseed, served on a vibrant, tangy and earthy beetroot puree. Uh, it's also accompanied by a luxurious, buttery fondant potato, slow roasted sweet rainbow carrots, and it's topped off with parsnip crisps, sharp pickled onions and a deep, rich pan sauce. Barry? Your turn. This is a striking duck dish. It's a fragrant blush breast, seasoned with fennel and aniseed, pan fried to perfection. That is then served on top of a rich and clean beetroot puree, also accompanied with an earthy mushroom cream. To lift the dish, we've also delicately layered some pickled red onions and some perfectly crisp kale leaves. Sounds yummy. So this is a rich, buttery, earthy dish offset by a tangy sauce. It's pan fried duck breast um, with a crispy skin and fennel crumb um, on a bed of red wine and beetroot jus. Um, there is a side of cabbage cooked in garlic and sea salt, buttery fondant potatoes, soft but with a slight bite, pan fried heritage carrots in butter, um, topped with crisp 
potato swirls. Some really interesting descriptors all round. Were any of them true? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is very subjective, but for me, Jay, that sounds delicious. A few things that surprised me. Mm. <laughs> the parsnip crisps. Yeah. Because I think you put artichoke crisps on yours. Did I? I love the fact that you identified the slight tang in the beetroot puree. The sumac was in there. That's giving it a tang. You picked that out. I like that. Not entirely sure where you got pickled onions from. What, what, what were they then? Those candy beetroots. It's nice to keep diners guessing. Overall, yummy. I want to eat it. Barry, big fan of the performance. Lots of language striking. The kind of words that you want that are very inviting. Key flavours are all there. Again, some surprises. Mushroom puree was an artichoke puree. That was my, I did think that. But overall, pretty good. The crispy bits wasn't kale, it was turnip tops. Oh. How did you not get that? Mm. But again, you picked out key cooking methods. And as a diner, I don't think there's anything that would surprise me, unless I had a nut allergy. You didn't mention the fact you'd scattered it in hazelnuts. <laughs> Last but not least, oh. Mike again. Lots of good descriptions. I think I got more of a feel for your dish. You also had some hidden ingredients that you couldn't quite identify. The turnip tops, not crispy, but yours were wilted. You missed the artichoke, which was pan fried and buttered that you had in a plate. You kind of thought that was parsnip. But again, overall, pretty good. I think I'd have been impressed enough to have ordered all of them. So on that base, a bad eat. However, oh. it comes with a caveat that we must continue expanding our vocab throughout the year and trying to describe food as best we can and picking out flavours because I think it's such a core skill. Challenge number three is the improvisation skill. Chefs are on their feet all day long and it is crucial that they are fueled enough. And actually, the team meal is a critical part and it's very common for one chef to be left in charge of creating a meal from yesterday's leftovers to feed the whole brigade ahead of service. We don't need you to feed the whole brigade, but we would like you to create one plate of food from a selection of leftovers. You can raid the store cupboards of our usual spices and herbs and vinegars, etc., etc., but focus on the leftovers that won't be much good tomorrow. It's basically, pass it on, but on my own. Your 30 minutes starts now. Okay, I think I'm gonna go for comfort food, beetroot mac and cheese. I have to embrace the colour from this. Beetroot and sumac puree. Beetroot orzo, love beetroot orzo. Should I serve meat with this? Do you know what, if it's there, it's a bit of a luxury for those that want it. Cold pan, skin side down. In the pan we need some olive oil and my Diced onions. Okay, you want to get those? Okay, I went to the dry store and I found some egg noodles and I'm thinking I'm going to do ramen burgers with egg noodles as the buns and some sort of hoisin duck in the middle. So I'm going to start by, by spilling water everywhere. So straight off the bat, Jamie is thinking comfort food, mac and cheese. He's melting the butter for his roux, he's grating the cheese and he's getting water on for the pasta. I can start to sprinkle in milk. That's what you do with milk, isn't it? You sprinkle it. I think I'm going to cut up some of the roasted uh, carrots um, and put that through the sauce as well so we get a bit of uh, veg in there. You've had 10 minutes. Go in with my cheese. I've got a mixture of cheddar and parmesan. I've absolutely no idea if that was enough cheese, too much cheese, or just the right amount. I'm thinking also, I'm going to bake my feta in some honey. Let's spunk this up. Some beetroot puree. Pasta water is boiling. Let's go in some mac. Jay, you're coming up to halfway through. Oregano, in with my onions. Tiny bit of sugar in with my onions. Mike started his time by cracking a seasoning egg and preheating some pan water for the noodles and a dry pan for the duck breast. I think he has a plan. Just going to take the stalks off of this cabbage. Maybe I'll just cut it into strips. Did no, don't you do that. So Jamie's happy with his pasta. He's adding peas to that water. He's got the sauce ready. And now he's thinking, what else can he treat the brigade with? We did a quick pickle 
uh, recipe in a video a while back, which was from CBA2, the cookbook. It was the mushroom tacos. It's all those kind of cheats and hacks from Can't Be Asked to Cook and the Meal Packs app for midweek cooking. That's the kind of thing that has a role here. Nine minutes remaining. Take some of our leftover cucumber ribbons, give them a bit of a tang. Put some white balsamic. I want these to pickle a little bit. I do want to be a little bit sweeter, so I might go with a little bit of sugar in with those as well. Barry's stirring the orzo into those softened, sweetened onions, and then a splash of wine. And next up, stock cube and stock. That's going to cook the orzo all in one pan. Oh, that's smug. So I'm going to drain my noodles, and now I'm going to run these down under cold water because otherwise they're going to scramble my eggs. Half a joke, right? Absolutely delicious. They've kind of got that new potato feel, but the taste is phenomenal. Some walnuts. This duck has finished cooking and searing on one side, and now he's going to pop it in the oven. Let's have a look at this duck. Hello! Mike's drained and cooled his noodles and then tossed them through the egg mixture, and now he's frying them off in rings to create the burger buns. Everything's good. We're good, we're good. In with my rainbow carrots into my sauce. Oh yeah. Mix up. Oh, look at that. It could all come crashing down now, obviously, but I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling okay. He's gonna cover it in breadcrumbs and cheese and it's gonna go under the grill. Duck fat all day. That's what chef's doing it. Naughty. Six minutes remaining. This is the risky business. I'm going to go in with a bit of this at a time. Let's see how red we want to go. Lovely looking thyme here as well. So Mike's got his duck resting now. He's flipped his noodle buns and he's beginning to saute off some cabbage with some sesame seeds. I feel like it's going okay. I don't know what your internal dialogue is telling you, but that's mine. So. I'm just really going to leave that to do its thing and then just drain it off kind of last minute but leave a little bit of the pickling, pickling juice there. Three minutes remaining. Let's get into the duck. Oh, lovely jubbly. Got my serving board. Yep, and they're looking good to me. So they can come out. Ah! I caught it. Not sure you could serve that to a dinner guest, but if you tell the brigade you threw it on the floor, then it's up to them where they want to this eat it. This dish is called Oops, I Dropped the Duck Ramen Burger Ebbers. Oops, I ducked it up again. Hoisin. Four minutes remaining. On the bottom. Done. You still had 10% of your time left. Yeah, but now I can go and do more important jobs. Off you go then. Last 45 seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Grubs up. It's handheld, bosh, nail it, crack on with the day. I have left quite a few hobs on, I apologise. <laughs> Jay, lift your cloche. Ooh. Ooh. Boys, I have made a beetroot mac and cheese with a quick pickle. So yes, I'm judging creativity, but creativity within the brief. So because you got the, um, the presentation badge in the first one, did you not bother this time around? Yeah, you can lose badges, right, Ebbers? That is exactly as I expected it to be. It is comforting, it is tasty, it is well seasoned, it's a good cheese sauce, it's got a good crunch. In a creativity challenge, how creative. Rotate, show the boys what you made. This is a beetroot orzo with artichoke, honey glazed feta, served with a side of duck breast. That's pretty damn good. Is there a back yourself badge? Because I think <laughs> someone's just earned it. <laughs> I just want to ask Mike, after taking the mickey out of my beetroot mac and cheese, mm. did Barry make beetroot pasta? So creative that two of you out of three did it. <laughs> well, That's all I'm saying, Evers. <laughs> all I'm saying. <laughs> Immediately, more fancy than I was anticipating for the brief of kind of a team staff meal, perhaps compensating for the lack of creativity in challenge one. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> Technically, again, very well executed, transformed into something completely different. And last but not least, 
Mike, what you got? A hoisin oh. duck ramen burger. Oh, mate, what? <laughs> I did not expect that. Wow. Excuse me, this is gonna be messy to eat. I think if you serve that up to a kitchen full of chefs, they would be thanking you for weeks because that is very, very impressive, balanced, considering how much fat there is in that. The pickle helps, the use of the pickle that was left, the use of the duck, that's quite clever, as well as creative. And whilst all three were delicious. No, no, no. Oh, my head's gonna fall off, Evers! Finish the sentence! For me, this is so far out of the box that I hadn't even seen it coming. And therefore, Mike gets a badge, as does Barry, for a creative use of flavours that I wouldn't have put together. A baked feta with artichoke and walnut and beetroot. Delicious. Two badges. Oh, phew! I am so relieved right now. Jamie, yours was also delicious, but perhaps a bit predictable. This is so bad for my heart. <laughs> Another great start, huge creativity. Let us know what you think. And we're just beginning to build out this ultimate chef skills challenge. So let us know what other badges they should be competing for and what challenges we should set them to achieve them. Comment down below or let us know on Twitter with hashtag sorted chef skills. If we weren't actual friends and this wasn't an actual real thing, we would have had to audition for this. Mm. <laughs> and we wouldn't and we have wouldn't got, got the job. <laughs> Even after <laughs> 10 years.